two very special guests that we have here today. Please give me, help, help me a welcome Adora and Adriana Spitak. Come on up, girls. Take a bow. This is Adora and Adriana. Okay, who's going to start? I will. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, but my sister Adriana is a musician, as you can tell from her violin, and I'm an author. And when you look at me, you might say, well, you look kind of young to be an author. What do you think is the average age? How old do you think of most writers as being? Do you think most writers are pretty old, or do you think they're pretty young? What do you think? 30? <laughs> <laughs> so when you think of writers, you might think of people who are a little older than me. But one of the great things about writing is that there's no age limit, or there's no minimum age that you have to be. And you don't even have to start writing. You could tell stories to your parents, to your friends, to anyone that you know that you want to share a story with. And what I'm going to be talking about today is the story in all of us. You could write it, you could tell it, you could stand on a stage, you could dance, you could play a violin, you could draw, you could do really any kind of thing to share your story and to have lots of fun in the process. So my credentials, or at least uh, why I'm here, how I got started, it really all started with my love for reading. Is there anyone here who loves to read? Maybe your parents read. read to you, do you like to hear stories? <laughs> I'm seeing some raised hands, great, I'm glad everybody here likes to read. So what is so great about reading? So anyone want to tell me, why do you like to read or hear stories? I like the language of it. I like hearing it in my head. Hearing it in your head, the language stories, of it? Stories, yeah. I love the images that come into mind when I'm mm -hmm. opening a book and I see images. I'm reading about princesses and castles and I'm able to actually see it. Or about dragons, you can tell I like fantasy a lot. <laughs> um, but there's really all kinds of books that create images in my mind. So when you read or when you're hearing a story and you hear the language or you see the images, and you're really excited about it, uh, you're reading someone's story, you're reading a story. And so I loved reading from when I was very young. And I thought everybody in the world likes to read. There's just no way that you could not like to hear stories and to read and to write. So then when I met someone who said, eh, I don't like to read that much. <laughs> My world just kind of, <laughs> I, I guess it would be a little dramatic to say my world sort of shattered, but you know, I was five and I had this idea, everyone in the world must mm -hmm. like to read. And so to have it just completely uh, dashed like that, it was really um, something for a five-year-old. So um, I decided, being five, and I was a very stubborn five-year-old, if I wanted something, I would usually get it. I said, I'm going to make everybody like to read and write. So being five, I also didn't know that maybe I would have a few challenges along the way. But being five was a really good benefit because I would uh, de I decide this, and later as I turned six and seven, I would start to write more. I published my first book, Flying Fingers, Master the Tools of Learning Through the Joy of Writing. And this allowed me to go around to schools, and I would speak to assemblies or to classrooms, and I would say, you know, here's why I love to read. Here's why you should love to read, too. And so my whole journey of speaking and writing and teaching, it really started with this single five-year-old's idea, I want to make everybody like to read. And I started telling my story in different ways. Uh, in Flying Fingers, I tell stories through short stories. So most of my stories are a few pages long, um, between, I guess, nine pages up to 15 pages or more. So usually short stories. And again, there's no minimum length or maximum length for a story. You could write a book that's a thousand pages long, or you could write one that's one page long or shorter. Mm -hmm. That's the great thing about writing, is that you decide what you want to do. And when you tell a story, you don't have to have a uh, you know, really dramatic thing happen. You don't have to have a battle with a dragon. You could if you wanted. You could have it be about something simple, like arguing with your parent about <laughs> what you're going to eat for dinner or something like that. So um, you, it's really up to you. That's the great thing about stories to me, is you can decide. I also really love to write poems. Has anyone here ever read a poem? Raise your hand if you've read a poem before. Does anyone know what a poem is? You want to tell me what a poem is? Go ahead. You know what a poem is? Sometimes it rhymes, right? It rhymes and... Sometimes, right? Yeah. It rhymes sometimes and 
you can like the words too. Very good. So a lot of poems that we know about they rhyme. So maybe they'll one of um, so a poem that I wrote it goes like this: Pum dee dee dum goes the drum. Some like to tap their feet and hum. And that's all that it is. It's two lines. It's two lines long. Uh, but again, poetry. It can be a big book. It could be short. Sometimes it rhymes. Like that one. You heard a lot of rhymes: Pum dee dee dum drum. <laughs> Hum. <laughs> I was really struggling to go with rhymes, and I thought, you know, a drum makes a good one. Uh, so poems can rhyme. There are poems that don't rhyme. In fact, a lot of people have gotten famous for writing poems that don't rhyme. So again, poems, just like stories, are really great ways to be creative. You can write about pretty much anything that you want. So I love to write poems, and my second book called Dancing Fingers, uh, right here on the document camera, is a book that I co-authored with my older sister, Adriana. She's not just a musician, she also loves to write poetry. And remember what I said earlier about how poems don't have to rhyme, some of them uh, don't have to rhyme. So if you look at my poems, most of them do rhyme. I'll be uh, saying things like nice, suffice, uh, in different rhyme schemes, but then if you look at my sister's poetry, does, doesn't it look a little different? See, there's not so many rhymes, mm -hmm. and it's very free form. Mm -hmm. So in one book, you see how two sisters could write in completely different ways. Mm -hmm. And I know that I've been saying a, how wonderful I think writing is, and I've been saying a lot of things about writing, but this really is the amazing thing, is that there's no, you don't have to be identical to anyone else. Maybe you've heard about, like, you know, popcorn always being different, or, various things, mm -hmm. there's no two alike, and in writing it's much the same thing, because it's your ideas and you decide what you want to write about. Mm -hmm. So poetry is a great way to tell a story. Novels, uh, my third book, Young Disguise, which uh, I just published, I don't have it with me right now, but it has, it's a very, very long story, all about the same thing, so I'm, it's a couple hundred pages, so you could write a really long story, you could write a pretty short story, you could write a poem, there are many different ways to tell your story. Mm -hmm. And these are just the ones you wow. can do through writing. My sister Adriana, she not only writes poetry and stories, uh, but she really tells stories or she sometimes um, shares emotions through her music. So do any of you like to listen to music? Yeah. I see some raised hands. <laughs> so to tell the truth, I usually listen to music because my older sister or my dad, uh, they have turned it on and I'm kind of listening by default because I'm in the car. But I like to listen to music too. I've gained a lot of interest from their influences. So if someone asks me what my favorite musician is, it'll likely be from either my dad or my sister. <laughs> now Adriana is a violinist, so she plays the violin. Does anyone here play a musical instrument? You do? What kind of instrument do you play? I play the piano. You play the piano? Great! Um, my sister, uh, she loves to play violin and piano, and she's actually been doing that for a little while now. So um, I, I really admire you because I tried to begin piano and it became too hard for me. And I gave up, <laughs> which doesn't show very, uh, which means I wasn't that determined, unfortunately. But um, my mom let me do that because she said, hey, you know, you like writing, so. Everybody gets so something. Smart it. mommy. <laughs> <laughs> so my sister is going to share um, how she, um, I guess, really tells stories um, through music. Not always music that she's written, but often music from composers. Uh, what piece are you going to be playing today? Uh, I'm playing a uh, Bach partita in D minor. Okay, so it's a <laughs> classical music piece, and mm -hmm. you can just... Um, so she's back on stage. And she's uh, on trying on to stage. pop on stage. Okay, so okay. Right. I'll, I'll grab okay. this for you. No. Okay. So it really shows that when I say tell a story, it doesn't necessarily just have to be a story that you've made up or something that's happened to you or, you know, something funny. It could, and it doesn't just have to be through writing. It could be through music. It could be just to share some emotions. And there's no boundaries as far as how to tell a story in you. Mm -hmm. So here's Adriana. So as you can tell, my sister really loves to play violin. <laughs> um, and that was a piece by Bob, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes? Uh. Hello? Hi. Oh, here. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. Okay, stay on the phone, and if I hang up on you by accident, uh, call back, okay? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Who's this? Hello? Yes? Hi. Hi, Leslie. Do you have a question or something you'd like to say? Ah, uh, really well. Thank you. She Thank did, you didn't so she? Oh, I'm just saying this. It wasn't me. <laughs> I'm saying this for Adriana. She said thank you very much. Um, so, do you do you like to listen to music? Yeah. Great. And so, have you heard um, music by Bach before? 
Cool, great. I'm glad you like it. So I hope that um, maybe you can listen to some more violin or some Bach music in the future. She's uh, eligible for and prizes. And since you called in, um, you're eligible to receive one of the prizes. I'm giving away uh, my book, uh, a copy of my book, Flying Fingers, and an Echo Smart Pen. It's going to so be a, Thank a, you very much for calling in. Um, what's your name? Uh, yeah. Leslie Rodriguez. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you, Leslie. So you just need to press the speakerphone button. <laughs> okay, great. So we heard say anybody from our first, call in. Yeah. Our first call in viewer, which is amazing, and anybody can call in. Uh, and anyone who really answers questions or calls in to leave a comment, um, as well as for those of you here in the theater, is eligible to receive a prize. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. Do you have a question or a comment? Well, I'm Mr. Alex Cruz's mom. Great. He's only four months old. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, um, did you did you get to hear my sister playing violin? Yes, I loved it. It was very nice. Thank you very much. And um, my daughter likes to read a lot of books also. Wonderful. So. She's seven years old, but she's not here. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, What's her child's name? Um, what what is your what is your child's name? <coughs> I'm sorry. Misael. Misael. Okay. Yeah. Great. Sorry. Do you mind writing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Have perfect. Been nice. Thank you so very much for calling in. You're welcome. Great. Okay. Thank you. Can, you. you can continue the presentation. <coughs> okay. So let's continue with the presentation. So you just heard from Adriana that sharing our emotions or telling a story it doesn't necessarily have to be in the form of writing or in a story in words on paper or in your mouth. It can be through violin. So think about how that music made you feel, or what are some of the things that you thought. Um, kind of like, take. I'm hoping that the music sort of took you on a little journey. Um, and that's the wonderful thing about music. Whether you like listening to pop, or classical, or rock, or rap, or hip hop, or whatever kind of music, country music, or, you know, I'm trying to think of all the genres of music here. <laughs> um, it, a lot of music really takes you on a journey, with lyrics or without lyrics. So music can be a wonderful way to get out your emotions. Those of you who play musical instruments or like to listen to music, this is an amazing way to tell your story. So what are different ways you tell stories? What are some of the things that you do? Do any of you, I know that some of you like to read, to write. Um, yes, how do you tell stories? Well, I write a lot. Writing a lot. I actually try, I always write. Um, short stories. Short stories. Yeah, I I really love short stories because they're very you know versatile. You can do a lot with them. So you could write a short story, you know, really practically anywhere as long as you have a paper and pencil. What are other ways you like to tell your stories? Does anyone here like to draw? Is anyone like to draw? I've seen some raised hands. So drawing is an amazing way to tell stories. You know, when what what are some things that you like to draw? What do you usually draw? You like to draw superheroes. Woo! I don't have any muscles here, but I can still do a superhero pose. So when you draw, you draw superheroes, or maybe you draw princesses, or maybe you draw beautiful landscapes, or you might draw someone walking to a restaurant. You know, there's all kinds of different stories that you can easily tell with drawing. And I remember I would draw the most wacky things. I would draw people who had bright blue faces. I should tell James Cameron I deserve the money from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> but drawing allows you to tell so many stories. So drawing is one amazing way. Does anyone here like to build things? Maybe you put together uh, different kinds of forts using various materials, or even if you do jewelry, like a friendship bracelet, kind of mm -hmm. telling a story. A friend always sees some racing. So what do you like to build? <laughs> You like to build rock ships? What do you like to build? I always make friendship bracelets. For friendship me. bracelets to yes, your friends? Yes. Wonderful. What do you like to build? I like to swim. You like swim. to swim? <laughs> oh, swimming is a good thing. That's a good thing, right? Yes. So, in this picture you can see here, some. I think this is Legos that he's putting together. I don't know what that is. It looks like maybe a, some kind of fort or some kind of castle. Um, so, when you build things, a lot of times your imagination really goes with you. When my sister and I were younger, we had all these wooden blocks in a drawer. They were really thick, big wooden blocks. So we would put together, we would have this big carpet in front of us, and we would just put together all these different houses, and then this would get our parents a little mad sometimes. We would take a marker and draw on the thin little wood pieces and make them into people, and we would set them along here. And sometimes we would take styrofoam, so you know, like, 
the, some like a styrofoam container mm -hmm. and we would turn that into a, another house or a lake or something like that. So we were very imaginative. We were also very destructive. We would um, try to wash Barbie's hair and that didn't turn out so well. <laughs> As some of you may know who've ever tried to do that. But building things, putting together worlds with your imagination, whether it's with wooden blocks or Legos or beads or bracelets, whatever you build, uh, think of the story behind it. Speaking, I love to speak. I love to get on a stage and tell people what I think. Um, that's really how I got started was by speaking. I would go to these schools and tell people, hey, reading and writing is amazing. And um, later I started speaking at bigger stages and really whatever stage I speak at, whether it's really super huge or uh, a little smaller, then I enjoy hearing from my audience. So that's why I've been asking you guys so many questions because I really love learning from you guys and hearing what you do. And I want to tell you a story of somebody who was in the hospital for a long time. He ended up turning something that you might think, oh, not so great. He was born with something that made his bones fracture a lot. So he's on the short side, but he's spoken at so many places. He actually ended up being, uh, he was an aide to someone in Congress, and he got to meet uh, Bill Clinton and uh, Tony Robbins, lots of famous people. And I got to meet him actually in person. It was really incredible to see his how name? he turned, uh, Sean Stevenson. He's actually pretty well known now. How he turned something, you might think, okay, pretty you know, negative, you know, that, that you would get things in your bones crashing, but he turned that into something amazing. He would go and speak and motivate people all around the world to do great things. Well, maybe so somebody's he's very friend getting married. And actually, what's really funny was when we were sitting on the plane, the person sitting next to my sister was the best friend of the lady who's now getting married to him. So that was a really fun coincidence uh, that we got to meet him and uh, then got to meet a friend. So that was pretty cool. So you see how you can turn something that you might think, okay, not so great, not really planned for, into something very positive. Mm -hmm. uh, drawing, I remember I asked you if you like to draw. Drawing uh, is a great way to tell stories. Yeah. Um, and so if you draw rocket ships or if you draw castles, whatever you draw, it can be a really wonderful mode. Does anyone here like to dance? Do you sometimes do little circles? Yeah. Twirl around? I can't yeah. dance very well. But, uh, do, what kind of music do you like to dance to? Do you dance to music or do you just dance around? Whenever you feel like it. Um, I like to dance to like funny music. Okay. So funny music. Funny music. On the radio. I like funny music too. So music that's on the radio. Uh, sometimes my sister will make a lot of fun of me for this, but especially after I've maybe eaten like a chocolate bar saying or that saying was too much sugar, I'm gonna be going around the kitchen going like this. Really, I know she's giving me this look. of like, what are you doing with your life here? And I was, I'm just if I have to work off some extra energy, I'll just hop around and um, this act pretty crazy. So dancing is a wonderful way either to work off energy or to look very graceful and beautiful. I'm not so good at that part. Uh, or just to have a great time. Music. I asked you, do you play musical instruments? Another great way to tell a story. Has anyone here ever tried to make your own song or to write your own? Yes, you have? Oh my goodness. That is a song that I've never tried. I don't think my sister's tried it too many times. So did you, like, did you write music or lyrics or how did you go about doing music on the piano? So you made music on the piano? I'm always... It didn't work. <laughs> well, what happens sometimes is like I've heard, I've heard people try to improvise, and sometimes it can end up, you know, you, like okay, when I was playing piano and I would try to make my own music, I would always start with chords, so it would end up going like do do do, so it wouldn't be extremely um, uh, awesome sounding. But that's the thing with trying again and again yeah. until you get it right, and yeah. um, not to be too perfectionist. Another great story of someone who turned an unexpected hospital visit into something amazing. Probably your parents will recognize her more than you guys, but Joni Mitchell um, actually found her voice. She started singing when she was in the hospital, and it was and she was very sad. She was like, you know, I might not be able to go home before Christmas. And so she was very stubborn. She's like, no, I'm going home uh, before Christmas. And she started singing Christmas carols all around the hospital. And this is actually what motivated her to start singing when she was nine. And she would sing Christmas carols so loudly <laughs> uh, actually some people started to complain. So it's kind of amazing um, these, these things that you find. Writing. I know that a lot of you like to write or to hear stories, to tell your stories. Uh, this is what I really love to do. As you can see on the document camera, I wrote this book, uh, Dancing Fingers, but also I want to tell you a little more about my book, Flying Fingers, um, which is nine short stories. And so this, I call it Master the Tool to Learn Through the Joy of Writing because I really believe that writing, uh, you can get a lot of joy from writing. And so I, um, let me find one where I can show you 
uh, a little bit of it. As you can see, I really like to use big words. <laughs> um, I put this vocabulary list on the front of my stories, not because I didn't write these starting out saying, I'm going to teach these words, but I um, just really love to, I, as I was seven when I started writing these short stories, then I would learn all these words and say, oh, sorry, is it not focusing too well? How's that? Probably, ah, that looks a little better. So, okay, what are some of your favorite words? Does anyone have some favorite words? That's better. Favorite words. Maybe words you like the sound of? Big. Big. That's a great word. You know, you, you, sometimes it's the only word that will do when you look at something. You know, you don't want to say, oh, that's vast. You know, it doesn't quite make sense. But sometimes when you look at the sign, you're just going to go like, wow, that's big. So big <laughs> is a wonderful word. You can use it a lot. Um, I like a word that's not quite big, but very close to big. Uh, has anyone here heard the word Brobdingnagian? I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Brob a snake is a great word. Some people will get very scared if you just mention it because it'll make them coming in the right. So my favorite word for the time being, before I learn a new one, is Brobdingnagian. Does anyone want to guess what that means? Brobdingnagian. Any guesses? Well, think about how long the word is. What might be a definition that would make sense for how long and big the word is? Broad, maybe? Well, Brobdingnagian. I'm still, I think it's Nagian. <laughs> Brobdingnagian means extremely large. So it makes sense for how big the word is. But that's not actually, they didn't just randomly say, hey, we need a word that means extremely large. We're just going to make up a word that's extremely large. It actually comes from a book called Gulliver's Travels. Has anyone here ever read Gulliver's Travels or maybe heard about it? Yes. See some raised hands. So in Gulliver's Travels, there's a place called Brobdingnag, and I believe that that's where everybody is big. So that's where Brobdingnagian comes about. So you see how stories, not only can we use really big words that we like, sometimes something that you write about could make a word appear in the English dictionary. So that's the kind of amazing thing about the influence of writing. And so I was inspired to write these stories a lot of times by images I saw or stories that I read. Um, so for instance, in this one, The Realm of Possibilities, it's all about this girl who decides, you know, I don't like just being stuck in the castle, I'm going to run away and help save my little village. And so she does that, and the way that she does it is kind of unusual. Um, but I won't say more, it's a, little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit funny, the ending is a bit of a surprise. But I just use all these different vocabulary words that I really like. And writing for, is my favorite way to tell stories. And uh, actually, since I, oh no, Treasure Island. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote uh, Treasure Island, Kidnapped, lots of different stories that are very famous. And he was actually, um, when he was little, when he lived in a really damp house, so he had a cough most of the time, he wasn't able to go to school sometimes. But during those times, he would write and write and write. And so his compulsive writing really started when he was little. Uh, and you see how there's no age limit to getting started telling your stories. So, now let's talk about our stories. What kinds of stories do you like? Do you like funny stories? stories? Do you like scary stories? Yes. I like scary stories. Scary stories. Oh my goodness. Again, I am in, I am in awe of you because I cannot read. I will read non-scary stories and I can get scared by the slightest mention of anything I don't know about. So, I get scared easily. You like scary stories too? Great. You guys are much braver than I am. I will get scared by anything. I love scary stories. Scary stories. You like princess stories. You like princess stories? About Belle. About Belle? Very nice. So, and that's why you're dressed like a princess today? Sometimes like scary movies. You like scary movies. Oh my goodness. Well, scary books are one thing. Scary movies? I like, you know, like, I like music. I mean, uh, Books, how you can travel. Books, where you can travel. You know, that's one of my favorite things. One of my early favorite books was this one. Um, I think it was like Kids Around the World or something. It had all these pictures of these kids from different countries, and some of them were wearing like, the most amazing hats, and others had interesting costumes, and others ate really different kinds of food. So it was an amazing way by seeing the lives of other kids around the world for me to learn about the world. So I love seeing pictures and reading about different places, even imaginary places. So travel books, uh, books about different places are amazing. So one thing that you might have noticed, and this is sort of a big word here, uh, sorry, but what makes stories exciting? What do you think makes stories exciting when you read them? 
Not knowing. Not knowing. Yeah. Not yeah. knowing. The yeah. <laughs> the anticipation. When you read a story, does the author put on the first page, um, the the mouse in the story really likes cheese, but he can't find the cheese. Well, now he's found the cheese. The end. Is that usually how stories go? <laughs> One short story. <laughs> that would be a very short story. Honestly, though, I wrote stories like that for quite a long time before I realized that hey, the reason that I really like to read books is sometimes because I don't know what happens on the very first page. And the reason that maybe we like reading stories where we don't know everything that happens is because if we don't know, then we keep reading to find out. We just have to know. And that's in the stories you might like to read. You want to find out, does the princess get rescued? Or does this person manage to make it up into space? Does the mouse manage to get to the cheese? Um, that was one I made up. I'm sure there's a story like that, though. <laughs> in order to be interesting, most stories have a difficulty somewhere. Mm -hmm. So the princess is locked in a castle, to be kind of stereotypical here. Uh, or this um, dragon is threatening the village. Again, sort of fantasy theme. So there's difficulties in stories just like there's difficulties in life. And, you know, we've all faced things. So for instance, for me, um, this is a very small one, but we get it sometimes when we're traveling. My mom always tends to be late to things. One time we were late, sorry mom, one time we were late to, some, to one very important thing, catching our bus back from New York to Philadelphia. So we run and we run and we run, and it's left five minutes earlier. So we have to figure out, so where do we go now? We've already taken like five taxis from here to there because we got where it was wrong. So this is obviously a big difficulty for us. So we're like, let's go to, let's go to the train station, and we managed to get on the train finally, and it's all fine. So you might think, well, that happens probably to lots of people. That's not very interesting. But when you write, you can make things sound very interesting. You can write about how you felt. You can write as though you're running in slow motion. You can make even something really simple uh, become very suspenseful. And you can write stories based on your own memories. So think about uh, times you were super happy, excited, uh, or maybe times where you were like, oh, I feel really sad today, or any time in between, and think, how could I make that into a story? How could I tell a story? So think of your favorite memories and say, hmm, do, you, do I think that I would like to tell this? And um, when you're writing it, you know, you don't put in the first sentence. Today I was happy uh, because, or you could actually put in the first sentence, today I was happy because, but you might also say, um, but I, instead of just saying today I was happy and leaving it at that, you would want to expand. You'd want to say today I was happy because of this. Today I was happy and I looked around and, you know, described some things. So this is how you get beyond your first sentence. You think, what can I add? So instead of just saying today I was happy, explain, add details. And this is um, really something when you read books, you know, it's not usually just one sentence, say I was happy, people add details and share why. So when you want to tell a story but you're not sure what should I write about, you can think, okay, what's a time I was super excited or happy? Maybe because uh, you got to, um, I don't know, like I know that you guys were sorting beads back there, what was that for, the beads? Um, I think they got um, a present from someone? Is that what the beads were for? What were they? Um, that was a donation. Yeah. Okay, cool. So sorting out beads and maybe you felt really good about helping, you know, because you were volunteering and so that, that was very nice to help sort them out. So you could write about, you know, I felt really happy because I helped out. So we want to hear more. Um, about you know why, what, when, where, add details, make it colorful, use your imagination. Um, because when you create stories, you can really go anywhere. Where do you think stories come from? Where do you get your ideas? When you're drawing, or when you're building something, or writing, where do your ideas usually come from? Your brain. Your brain! <laughs> yes, that's a very, very good point. Your ideas do come from your brain. So when you have ideas in your brain, uh, what are, where do you usually get those ideas? Um, so you have ideas in your brain. Do you get them from looking at pictures, maybe? Does anyone here get ideas from looking at pictures? Do you ever, so if you look at maybe a photograph and you think, hmm, I wonder who this person is or what they're thinking. I went to the art museum um, one time, and I uh, actually saw it the other day, and I was looking at a portrait and I was thinking, hmm, this might be a good inspiration for a story. I could write about what is this person thinking? Where are they? What are they doing? 
So sometimes even looking at a very simple thing, like a picture, where are some other places we might get our ideas? Yes? When we're interested in something. When we're very interested in something. Yes, what are your favorite things to, uh, to learn about? Does anyone here have a favorite thing that they like to do? Yes. Science. Science. You really like science. So how could you be inspired by science? What's something you could do with science? Well, maybe you could write a story about a scientist who really, really wants to discover some kind of thing that will make, uh, that will make, you know, <laughs> I don't know what, what's something that would be really cool. Okay. He wants to discover something that will make everyone super happy for a day. So you could write about a scientist trying to discover something. What are some other topics that you're super interested in? Yes? Math. Math. Great. So how might you write a story having to do with math or inspired by math? Any ideas? You could, you could even go really, really wild. You could say, I want to write a story from the, as though I were a plus sign. What would life be like if you were a plus sign? <laughs> It would be happy because you add you add things, so you're like everything gets bigger, everything gets better. That that would be very funny. What are some topics you like? What do you like? Um, well, I like to rock climb. You like to rock climb. Great. So you've rock climbed before, so you could write about. I don't know very much about what it's like to rock climb because I've only done it a couple times, like in our yacht or something. So I, um, I'm not sure about you know how how does it feel to get up to the top because I you usually. You went to the top before, and your dad has to climb, 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 climb. Yep. And when you're to the top, you're on the top. Yes. <laughs> that is a very, you know, you could, you could use that as a sentence in the story right there. When you're on the top, you're on the top. <laughs> I like the sound of that. And you describe how your hands feel, how good you feel at the top, and how far it is down. You know, you could say all these things in your story. You could write about what it's like to rock climb. Let's get one more thing. What is a topic you are super interested in that you could maybe write a story about? What are you interested in? To play piano. Oh, you like to play piano. Very good. So, what do you think? Maybe you could write a story about that? Yeah. Okay. Yes, you could. And ballet. And you said you like princesses. So, you could write a very good story about all of those things. And I like drums. And you like drums. Drums. You know, this would be a great one for a poem. Um, I mentioned earlier that I had that two-line poem about a drum. Well, you could write an even better one, I am sure. Maybe you could write one about a boy who drums so loudly it wakes up the entire neighborhood. And what you do after that, I'm not sure how you would solve that problem. But um, you, it might be a funny poem or a story. So we know that we can get stories from all over. Some people say, write what you know. What do you think that means? Well, write what you know essentially means, you know, write what you know about. Do you think this is always true? No. Probably not, because there's lots of things that I don't know about. I didn't live back in medieval times in a village. I wouldn't know what it's like to fight a dragon or to, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of some other situations. I wouldn't know what it was like to live in ancient Egypt and try to figure out how to cast a spell. You know, I don't really know any of that, but I would write about it anyway, because really, I think you can write about anywhere that you can go with your imagination. Mm -hmm. You can write about uh, people in other places or from the past. That's why I really love to write about ancient Egypt. I, ha I wrote a story. And you don't just have to stick with people. Animals are amazing for inspiration, too. I like giraffes. You like giraffes, right? I think this is... So, what, anyone know what this animal is? A zebra. A zebra. A zebra. A zebra. What does a zebra look like? Does anyone know what a zebra looks like? Black with black stripes. White with black stripes? Is it really big or really small or somewhere in the middle? It has white stripes and black stripes. Very good, as you can see from here. Very colorful. So the great thing about animals is that we can get a lot of ideas from how they look or how they move. How does a snake move? Does anyone know how a snake moves? It slithers. It slithers. Doesn't don't you don't you like the sound of slither? Isn't that a cool word? 
Slither. So You like the what of snakes? You like the sound of the snakes. What kind of sound does a snake make? <laughs> so, a snake hisses as it slithers. This is very, that is a very hard sentence to say. It's a big tongue twister. So, we can get inspiration of how animals sound, how they move, what they look like. And that's what we're going to do right now. Let's write. I have a few uh, stuffed animals here on the document camera. Does anyone know what this is? Uh, no. uh, I might just zoom out a little bit. Let's see. Stingray. It's a stingray. Yep, this is a stingray. So it goes through the water. Uh, and if you feel a stingray, I felt um, probably not this dangerous, but I felt a stingray once at uh, an aquarium, and it was very kind of slimy. So it's an interesting feeling. Does anyone know what this is? A hammerhead shark. A hammerhead shark. Hammer shark. Yeah. Does anyone know why it would be called a hammerhead? <laughs> its head looks like a hammer. Yes, that's right. You can imagine kind of like if you're tapping a nail. Uh, uh, the, I'm not doing this to the poor shark, but uh, the head looks like a hammer. So we have a stingray. We have a shark. Now, as I'm looking through these stuffed animals, I want you to start thinking, how could we write a story about these animals? How do you think we could write a story about these animals? Do you think these animals are friends, or do you think they fight all the time? Do you think that they live in the ocean, or are they in an aquarium, or does someone have them as a pet? That would be kind of a dangerous pet, a hammerhead shark, um, to say the least. And here we have, this is another shark, it looks like, I think, from the teeth. Uh, not quite the same kind of shark, but a shark, nevertheless. And finally, we have one that doesn't quite belong in the ocean. This one does not quite look like an ocean animal. It looks like a bear. Yeah, a teddy bear. There's actually two, right? We have a pink one here. So we have a lot of animals. So maybe these can be, maybe these can be our characters. Do you know what characters are in the stories? What are characters? There are yes. movies. There are movies. Yes. Characters are the people in the story. They're the people or animals that the story is about. So, who is a favorite character in a book of yours? Yes. Sharks. Sharks. Okay. So you read a book about sharks. What are other favorite characters? My favorite character is a shark. What's your favorite character in a book? Okay, Nancy, Nancy. Great. Yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, you like to read. So, what? Think of a book, and what's your favorite character in it? Tweety. Oh, Tweety. <laughs> Great. Yes. What's your favorite character? Belle. Belle, of course. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Actually, yeah. A girl named Jen in a book called Among the Hidden. Among the Hidden, a girl called Jen. Okay, great. That sounds like a good book. So, your favorite characters, think about your favorite characters. What makes them your favorite characters? So, uh, if you think about, you know, are they really smart? Are they adventurous? Are they brave? What makes them really interesting to you? So, now we're going to write a bit. We're going to create our own characters here. So we're going to choose a few of these to be our characters. So um, we wouldn't want to be our main character. So the main character is the person who the book is mostly or the story is mostly about. So if you think about um, your favorite book or your favorite character, the main char character is the one who most of the writing is about. Um, so, Let's look here. Who do you think would make the best main character? The stingray, the hammerhead shark, the pink teddy bear, the black teddy bear, or the uh, um, blue shark here? The hammerhead. So you're, you're saying shark? Which shark? We have two options here. Hammerhead. The blue one. Hammerhead. Okay, raise your hand for the hammerhead. Raise your hand if you like the hammerhead. Okay, raise your hand if you like the blue shark. <laughs> it looks like the hammerhead has won. The hammerhead has a very powerful head, after all. Uh, I don't know how big the brain is in there, but it does have quite a nice, nice um, uh, view here, it looks like, eyes on the other side. So, hammerhead shark will be our main character. Now, what are we going to name the hammerhead shark? Mm -hmm. I like both of them. Sally? 
Okay, so our hammerhead main character shark is named <laughs> main character shark is named Sally. Let me just. I like both of them. Sally the hammerhead. I love it. Oops, get I, was in, I need to get into the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, So I'm going to start typing this up. We're going to write a story together on the board, and we know our main character is Sally the Hammerhead Sharp. But we also need to think about a setting. Where is this, and when is this? Okay, so Sally the Hammerhead Sharp is our main character. I need to make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. Uh, so, where do you think this is? Is it an aquarium? Is it in the ocean? Ocean. Is it in some ocean. house? Ocean. Is ocean. It? Okay. Ocean. Okay. It's in the ocean. ocean. So this is what we call our setting, where the story is, and this is the ocean. Okay. Great. So, what do you think is going on here? What are we writing about? So we know Sally is the main character. Does she have a friend? Does she have someone that she's getting into a bit of a uh, trouble with? Um, and do, let's look at our characters here. We have we can choose. Let's say two or three more. Um, okay. So who should Sally's friend be? Does Sally have a friend here? The stingray. The stingray. Okay. So let's say the stingray is Sally's best friend. And what is the stingray called? Anyone have a clue as to what the stingray might be called? Go ahead. Never mind. Okay. Uh, anyone else idea for what the stingray should be called? Go ahead. Perry. Perry. Okay. Perry the stingray. Good name. Very nice. Oops. <laughs> stringray, that would be a different <laughs> I don't think that animal exists. I think it would be a whole lot thinner, probably, in the string. Uh, that would be interesting. Okay, so Sally the Hammerhead Sharp, Perry the Stingray, and let's have one more character. It's between the blue shark, the pink teddy bear, or the black teddy bear. The pink teddy bear. Pink teddy bear. Shark. Shark. Let's raise your hand for the shark. Shark. Okay. Let's raise your hand for the pink teddy bear. Hey, you can't vote twice. No one or twice. Or raise your hand for the black teddy bear. Okay. So it looks like, um, is it the blue shark that's won? No, the pink teddy bear. Raise your hand for the pink teddy bear. Sorry to do this again. No. Okay, it looks like the blue shark won, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So, the blue shark, what should the blue shark be called? Nick. Nick the blue shark. Okay. Ew. Mommy. Nick. So. And Nick the blue shark. So what is his role here? Is he a friend? Is he not so friendly? What is going on here? He's friendly. He's not so friendly. Not so friendly. So what do you think? Why might we want to have someone who's not so friendly? Make it exciting. <laughs> to make it exciting. So if we have someone who's maybe not so friendly, then we have a bit of a problem. Uh, and the reason that we might want to have a problem in our story is so that it's something that the characters have to work. We have to work in order to get out of a problem. So maybe they can all become friends, or they can decide, here's, you know, here's how we're going to deal with this problem we have, that Nick the Blue Shark is not so friendly. So maybe they're going to try and figure out you know, how can we get him to be friends with us? Or he's going to figure out that there are consequences to not being so friendly. Okay, so we have our characters, we have our setting, it's the ocean. Now, how should we start? When is it? Is it a really nice day in the ocean, or is, is it not so great? Not so great. Not so great. Okay, not so great. So what do you think a not so great day in the ocean would look like? Oh, a lot of times. Lots of waves. It's dark. What else? At night. It's at night. Okay, so it's stormy, uh, windy, lots of waves, dark at night. What is another? Any other descriptive words we could use? Yes. Windy. Always. Yeah. It's a taste. Go ahead. A beautiful day. Yeah. Well, maybe. So right now we have. We have a description of what looks like a pretty bad day in the ocean. But maybe the next day will be beautiful from something they do. Yes? Um, wind. Well, it's a wind. Okay, so we have stormy, windy. Okay, well. Um, uh, there's oil in the ocean. Oh, maybe there's some oil in the ocean. Okay. So that's a good one. So now we have now we have kind of two problems here. So they 
they don't like it's very dark it's very stormy there's oil it's not a good setting and it's dark and there's a not very friendly shark so how do you think they're going to solve these problems let's start writing and see um so i'm going to describe let's start with a little description the waves um I, i'm kind of revising as i'm going that's another thing with writing you don't get it perfect the first time or even the second time you always go back and you might change things Right. Just wanted to remind uh, everyone upstairs that you can be answering these questions. The number is 3218, so you're part of telling our story too, okay? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt yes, you. Yes, please. But Actually, I was going to see what the number was. 3128. Three, you can three, help us write this. 3218. Um, 3218. Oh, I, I just said <laughs> Three, two, one, eight. Three, Thank two, you. One, eight. Thank Sorry you. about that. Three, two, one, eight. Uh, I can... Oh, very okay, so it's storming. Let's describe this. So, it was a dark and that sounds familiar. Actually, it was a dark and stormy story. <laughs> um, let's try to be very original here. The waves, or maybe it's our okay. Sally the hammerhead shark um, swam hard through, swam um, energetically. <laughs> But well, see, she struggled. She struggled. She struggled. Yeah. she struggled to swim through the oil. Struggled yes. to swim <laughs> through the thick, strangely thick, dark water. Thick <laughs> black oil. Wow. Water. Hey, oil. Hey, gooey. Hey, gooey. 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 Oil. Ew. Gooey. Yeah, good word. <laughs> the, the sides of her head. Okay, so you know how you <laughs> see if you're like struggling really hard through the ocean, you know, maybe you might get some here and there. So it would be very hard if you can imagine, you know, fighting through something, it's a bit gooey some. And that's where her eyes Yes. So it would be very hard to blinking, see. Blinking, blinking. It was hard to see through the, the waves, which kept buffeting, is that like buffeting her up and down on the surface? Of the water. Okay, so our animals might speak a little bit. I know this doesn't happen so much in the real ocean, but you never know. So uh, we're going to have the stingray. And, uh, they're all going to talk a little bit. Okay, so let's read what we have so far. Sally the hammerhead shark struggled to swim through the thick blackened water, gooey oil sticking to the sides of her head. It was hard to see through the waves, which kept buffeting her up and down on the surface of the water. Ah, she said, exhausted. I wish uh, this storm would end already. Okay, so where do you think her friend Perry the Stingray comes in? Yes. Maybe he's hiding in a cave nearby. Maybe he's hiding in a cave nearby, so is he going to like pop out and try to scare her? Is he just going to join her? <laughs> pop okay. So pop out. Ooh, woo! <laughs> Shouted over <laughs> behind her. Sally, um, I guess hammerhead sharks can't really jump, but flop to maybe? I don't know. How, what do you think a shark would do if it was very surprised? Jerked. Jerked. Jerked, Jerked upwards. In utter surprise, um, utter surprise, utter shock, maybe. I get it. Uh, startled or uh... yeah, upwards, startled ah, to see what the strange noise was. A. So what would you describe this color as? Brownish. Brownish, sandy. with D. Yeah, sandy, that's a good way. I can't, I was like, it's not quite gray. But I, um, sandy stingray uh, popped out from behind, uh, from behind a underwater cave. Oh, of course, she broke. It's you. <laughs> Actually, it was, so not super excited to see uh, Perry right here. <laughs> what do you mean? It's you. <laughs> Perry asked, um, unaware that he had. Okay, so here we go. Um, what do you mean it's you, Perry asked jovially. Shouldn't you be glad to see me? So he's kind of joking a little bit. 
And I'm, we only have a little bit of time for a few more lines, so what should we write here? A few more lines. And we might not finish this entire story right now, but this is why I encourage you to think about how can you finish this on your own. So what's going to happen? Nick the blue shark. We have our kind of unfriendly shark. So he comes in. Is he going to tease them? What is he going to do? Is he tease them? Maybe he's always startling. Perry or? Yeah, I mean, maybe that's why they weren't so glad to see him. Okay. You know? Or yes. He wasn't so, so glad to see I her. I would. Except who's who. you do this 20 times every day, <laughs> Sally said, matter of factly. Is that, oh, factly? I'm not sure if that's a word. Oh, well, I'll check out. Um, actually, maybe it is. I think that yeah. is. Adverb, yep. Okay, great. Yep. Ah. Oh, Perry said that was good. Well, I suppose I might tone it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but then I wanted to have the joy of seeing you shriek like that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to believe a hammerhead shark would be so startled. Shrieking. <laughs> the, fun, the fun part of the story is a shrieking hammerhead. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe, so they're talking and they're going along in the ocean, and maybe Nick isn't so happy that they're making this noise. <laughs> Quiet it down over there, <laughs> shouted a grumpy... Um, <laughs> Sally turned to see where the grumpy noise, uh, where the grumpy noise was coming from, and she was not at all surprised to see Nick, the blue shark. He was always scolding her for making too much noise. Okay, so how do you think how do you think maybe they can reconcile or how can they be friends with Nick? So he's not happy they're making so much noise. So how do you think they can maybe be friends with Nick? They can maybe get him to be less grumpy. Yes? Be nice. Be nice. Be nice, okay. Teach him to be nice. Try to be more quiet. They can try to be more quiet. Great. What are some other ideas? So if you if someone is being a little grumpy or you feel like, oh maybe I um, am being too loud, what what might you do? Ooh, what? Smile at them. Smile at them. Smile. Very good. Okay. Sally was tempted to shout, um, mind your own business, but she realized that they had been on the loud side. So she did something that surprised even Perry. She smiled. Sorry about that, Nick. She said, we'll be more quiet next day. And by the way, you want to come to the, so how do you think they might make the ocean all really beautiful again? What, what might they do together? Well, maybe they can put out fresh Air. They can put out fresh air, okay? So they can maybe maybe they can since Sally has this hammerhead after all, maybe she can push through it and put out fresh air. Okay, so you know who knows? Maybe they can figure out a way. By the way, and do you want to come to the cleanup party? Home cleanup party. <laughs> so it would be the home cleanup party, right? Because it's the ocean. For sure, Nick said and did something that surprised all of them. Okay, great. So we managed to uh, wrap up a little bit of this. Maybe this could be the first chapter of a really long story, or it could be kind of a short story. So here we go. It's obviously not perfect. We could do some things. We could add some more dialogue, add some more description, but it's pretty good so far. Sally and the hammerhead shark struggled to swim through the thick black and water, gooey oil sticking to the sides of her head. It was hard to see through the waves, which kept buffeting her up and down on the surface of the water. Ah, she said, exhausted. I wish the storm would end already. Woo! shouted a voice from behind her. Sally jerked upwards, startled to see what the strange noise was. A sandy stingray popped out from behind an underwater cave. Oh, of course, she groaned. It's you. What do you mean it's you? Perry asked jovially. Shouldn't you be glad to see me? I would, except you do this 20 times every day. Sally said matter-of-factly. Ah, Perry said delicately. 
Well, I suppose I might tone it down a bit, but then I wouldn't have the joy of seeing you shriek like that. Quite it down over there. Sally turned to see where the grumpy noise was coming from. She was not at all surprised to see Nick, the blue shark. He was always scolding them for making too much noise. Sally was tempted to shout, mind your own business, but she realized that they had been on the loud side, so she did something that surprised even Perry, who of course thinks he's seen everything. She smiled. Sorry about that, Nick, she said. We'll be more quiet next time. And by the way, do you want to come to the home cleanup party? For sure, Nick said, and did something that surprised all of them. Smiled back. So, this is our story that we've written together. And the amazing thing about this is that this is all your story. This is not a story that I've come up with. This is a story that you've come up with by deciding, hey, which characters should we have? What are we going to name them? Where do they live? What will they do? Who is the problem? Or what is the problem? And how do they solve it? And adding all the descriptive details. So this is your story as well as mine. And that's the great thing about writing is that you can use it with other people. You can tell stories that you think of in your head that you come up with about sharks and oceans or about uh, yourself. You can write poems. And so writing really has many different forms and shapes. Um, I want to just uh, scroll back here in the presentation. So now that we know that we can really write about pretty much anything, whether we know a whole lot about it or we like it or whether it's in our imagination, something we come up with, you can really write about anything. So, what's your story? <laughs> if you have any questions or answers, uh, uh, if you have any questions, Adriana I should say, um, you can always ask me, but Adriana is going to play one last song. Oh, I know. Oh. oh. <laughs> She's a little would, you, would you like to play oh. one more song, Adriana? Um, I can play.